Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some surprise baby romances. I used to not be a fan of the surprise baby trope, but I have been reformed. I think I actually really like it. So here are 10 romances that I really enjoyed that had the surprise baby trope. And I just also want to preference surprise baby is different than secret baby. So secret baby is when they're keeping the baby a secret and surprise baby is like, oh, I'm pregnant. And then like they tell them secret is like keeping it a secret. I'm not the biggest fan of those because I don't like keeping secrets. I don't like lying. Um, so yeah, so secret baby and surprise baby are kind of different. And also some of these books, people would consider me spoiling if it's mentioned. But I don't know when someone tells me that there's a surprise baby in a book, like it makes me want to read it more. So you have been warned. If you think telling this is a spoiler, maybe don't watch this. I don't know. I don't care. So <laughs> maybe y'all do. I'm just letting y'all know. I obviously have to start with my, my tried and true. This is Out on a Limb by Hannah Bottom Young. The secret baby part is literally in the description. So Wynn and Bo end up meeting at a party one night and they have a grand old night together. Okay, they can't stop thinking about each other afterward. Um, but then Wynn finds out that she's pregnant. And then like, they move in together because Wynn doesn't live in a great place and Bo has plenty of room in his house. Um, so it's kind of like friends to lovers, even though they did start out like hooking up, you know? It's still friends to lovers. I'm obsessed with this. It has great disability representation. Our hero is an amputee. Our heroine was born with a limb difference. And I just love the discussion of disability and being a mother when you have a disability and if you're enough and if you feel worthy enough. Like, oh, I love the discussion of everything in this book. I love it a whole heck of a lot. Mm, I can't, I can't talk any more about this book or we'll be here for forever. A book that really reminded me of Out on a Limb is Ready or Not by Cara Bastone. But this one's interesting because the hero is not the father of the child. <laughs> um, so in this book, our heroine finds out that she's pregnant from a one night stand. Um, and this is her romance with one of her best friends named Shep. And it is another friends to lovers romance. However, he's not the father of her baby. There's some complicated things going on with the father of her baby. She's not keeping it a secret from the father. There's just some things going on in his life that is complicating things. But again, you have a woman who is scared of motherhood and feeling very unsure about the world and doing this all on her own. But Shep is there 100% of the way. And uh, I I love this man. I love, if you want like an attentive golden retriever hero to read about, you have to pick up Ready or Not. This one is interesting though, because unlike all the other books in the series, the heroine is not carrying the hero's baby, but that baby is still like gonna be a part of his life. He's still gonna consider that baby to be part of his family. So I love Shep so much and the way that he is devoted to our heroine I'm obsessed with him. Next I have Lizzie Blake's Best Mistake by Maisie Eddings. We have another situation <laughs> where both characters hook up one night. The hero is actually on a business trip to America, um, in America. He is from Australia. So they have this grand old night together, okay? It's really fun, really good. And then the heroine figures out that she's pregnant and she's like, oh, this guy lives all the way in Australia. Like what's going on? What, what's gonna happen? Um, so she ends up calling the guy up and is like, uh, I'm pregnant, so you're a baby, just so you know, you don't have to do anything. Like, I'm just letting you know, you're gonna have a kid. In the world at one point he's like okay i'm coming to america she's like oh you're gonna come visit like like what's going on and he's like oh no i'm moving like i am for sure moving to go be with you and this kid and these two like owen win from out on a limb have to move in together they want to get to know each other more and live together for the sake of the baby and this has great adhd representation i love lizzie so much next i have getting played by emma chase this was one of my first romances that I read that had this trope in it, I remember. Um, I think I listened to it on Audible Plus or Audible Escape when Audible Escape was a thing. RIP Audible Escape. I miss it every day. Um, but Getting Played is about our heroine who is a single mother and I think she has like a, a fun night with a guy she meets one night and then turns out that happens to be her son, like her teenage son's new teacher. <laughs> So it's a very awkward parent-teacher conference at first. Then the heroine finds out that she's pregnant with his baby and he is like all on board. Ooh, if you want a darker one, that's like surprise and secret baby. It's Bloody Heart by Sophie Like. It's tried and true. I believe this is the fourth book, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, fourth book I'm looking at the the books over there. This is the fourth book in her um, Brutal Birthright series, Mafia Romance series. Our hero and heroine end up meeting when they're like younger, I want to say like 18, 19, 20-ish age range, um, and they fall for each other hard, but they're from different worlds. She's kind of like a socialite and he's a part of this mafia family and their families would like not approve, especially hers. She finds out that she's pregnant 
shortly before something happens to Dante, our hero, um, to where she realizes she does not want her baby to be a part of this mafia life. And so she leaves without telling him that she's pregnant. It takes place years later when she has her son. He has grown, or he's not like a baby anymore. Um, he is, I wanna say like middle school age range. And she has to come back into town where Dante lives for a specific reason. I think she's a famous, model if I'm not mistaken and she has like an event that she's doing anyway Dante sees her and falls basically head over heels in love again and then he realizes oh my gosh that might be my kid so secret and surprise baby love this one next is Mafia Mistress by Mila Finale another mafia one this one's like a duet you need to read the duet to get like the full story you have Mafia Mistress and then you have I think Mafia Darling is the next one um where that one more so explores her like pregnancy and stuff but she finds out that she's pregnant in this book this book Starts out with our heroine, who I think is like 18, 19 years old. Um, her family is a part of the, is like a mafia family. Her dad sets her up along with this mafia boss guy, wants her to marry his son, Giulio, and he lives in Italy, I think. Anyway, he meets the heroine, brings her to Italy, kind of like kidnaps her because she does not want to go, but her father kind of like sold her to him, right? So he takes her to Italy and it's like very set on marrying his son off to the heroine. But then he gets to know her more and see like her spark and fire. And he is so attracted to her that he's like, you know what, I think I'm gonna take you for myself instead. So, and yeah, she ends up pregnant in here. So that is a surprise baby in here. If you want a monster romance, I have A Soul to Heal by Opal Rain. You definitely, I feel like need to read these books in order because like a lot of the world building of this series happens in book one. Um, but this is book number two, where we did meet this hero character, by the way, the monster hero character. In book one, we met him in the first book. But anyway, um, he's very, he's a new, cr newly created monster creature. So he's kind of like innocent to the um, world. Like he doesn't know a lot about it. Anyway, our heroine is from a human village and she gets shoved off of a cliff into the forest where our monster hero lives because she ended up killing her husband and his mistress. She killed her husband because he was having an affair, <laughs> you know? And she is like, doesn't care what happens to her. She, when she gets pushed off the cliff, she actually lands on top of our hero. In here, he doesn't have a name, so he's called Nameless. He kind of saves her and nurses her back to health because he's seen um, another creature of his have a human woman and has fallen in love with her. He's like, I want that for myself. And he thinks that this woman could be it. Um, but when she wakes up, like she's basically like, just kill me. She is, there's a lot of trigger warnings in here for suicidal thoughts and mental health and depression. So please be aware of that. But the two of them, slowly start to heal together. The heroine more so is going through a healing journey and the hero is trying to learn more about the world. But yes, in one point of this book, the heroine finds out that she's pregnant with this like monster creature. I loved that. I love reading like pregnancy when it comes to like monster romances because I'm like, oh, how is the author gonna do this? Like, what is what is this character gonna look like? What's this baby gonna look like? You rarely, very rarely in like alien monster romances get to see like the baby you know, like afterward to see how is it different or similar to humans. And like in here, a large chunk of the book, like the baby is born, like the baby is born, like maybe like halfway through this book. And so like you get a large chunk of like this baby creature that I was terrified of at first. I'm just letting you know, so. <laughs> Next I have Adiron by Ruby Dixon. A lot of Ruby Dixon books kind of like have the surprise baby trope because they're like fate and maids and they're destined to have babies together, okay? Um, but this is one of my favorite ones. This is the first book in her Corsair Brothers series. Basically the beginning of this book, you have the Corsair Brothers, there's four brothers, no, three brothers, and then you have one other book with a pirate guy they become friends with. Anyway, so Adiron is our first brother to get his romance. Um, these brothers are trying to track down this spaceship that is supposed to be full of like treasure, okay? They end up finding it and realizing this isn't like full of like gold or like physical treasure. It's full of human women slaves. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, they would probably give us a lot of money, but we're not into slavery, no. When they board the ship though and realize like, oh, this is full of human women, not like coins and stuff. Um, so few of the women are awake from stasis pods and they have been abused by aliens in the past. So they think that these men are gonna be doing the same thing. So this book starts out with Jade, our human woman, and like a few other human women who are awake, luring these aliens <laughs> into one area of the ship and knocking them out with gas because like they think that they're gonna like take them or something. And so the first moment that Adiron sees Jade through this window of him like passing out from gas, he's like, I'm like in love with this woman. Like she's knocking me out with gas. Like she is so cool. And he just, out. Um, and that's how it starts. And he fully falls for her. There's a surprise pregnancy trope in here. 
Okay, just letting you know. But I love this one, it's so fun. Um, there is an audiobook for this one if you're interested. There's also another book where the heroine's not pregnant from the hero. I forgot, I think I said earlier that there's only one book like that on this list, but there's not. When the Earl Met His Match by Stacey Reed is another one. So the heroine of this book, um, she gets pregnant from another man. She has like a passionate tryst with a guy that she thought she was in love with, but in fact, he turned out to be a turd, so. <laughs> She's like, oh, no, no. Um, anyway, so this book starts out with, I think, like, before she finds out that she's pregnant, um, she ends up finding this ad in the paper basically saying, like, in need of a wife and all the qualifications listed that um, this person wants in a wife. That happens to be our hero. <laughs> and um, she basically writes him back for fun, for kicks and giggles, if you will, saying, like, I don't think any woman is gonna like respond to your ad like what you're asking for is a lot and anyway the two of them get in like this bickering bantering relationship with letters which I love epistolary romances like that I'm obsessed with it anyway so the heroine finds out that she's pregnant she's kind of been kicked out of the house she has nowhere else to go and so she winds up on her hero's doorstep she's been corresponding with him for a while writing these letters and she doesn't know what he looks like he doesn't know what she looks like and she basically comes to him and is like I need your help will you please marry me? I am pregnant and I'm going to be utterly ruined. They get married. Our hero is also speechless. Um, so you have a speechless character, but I really enjoy this one as well. So the secret baby is a little twist in here. And my other historical one that I have is The Viking She Would Have Married by Lucy Morris. If you want a Viking romance, this one is great. This is like a second chance romance. Our heroine is a shield maiden. So I think kind of like, um, I forget her name from Game of Thrones. The one with the blonde short hair. She's like in love with Jamie. She's like a warrior lady. I forgot her name. Anyway, Brian, 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 Brian of Tori, Brian, sorry. Just came to me, Brian. She reminds me of Brian. Okay, these shield maidens. Anyway, she's been hired to work on this or be a shield maiden on one of these Viking boats who the hero is the captain of and they have a history, but she needs money for her family. Her family is like starving, her sisters and her mother. So she's gonna go basically work for her ex and she's not excited about it because it didn't end on the best terms. Like he broke her heart and he believes that she broke his heart. Like it's doubly, they are not talking about what happened because they think that the other person broke each other's heart. Anyway, throughout this trek and this journey, they're going on a journey to a land far away to get some supplies or whatnot. They end up falling for each other again. Um, kind of saying like, oh, this is only gonna last while we're on this boat and it'll end when we get off of it. But then she finds out she's pregnant. Anyway, so how much those are some surprise pregnancy romances. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a baby emoji or a pregnancy emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.